Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make an awesome tinder right from the comfort of your own home. You don't need to build a big wood fire, you don't need to go outside and use one of your wood stoves. Today we're going to make some char cloth with that burner right back there. All right, everybody, welcome back. So if you guys are unfamiliar with char cloth, I think I've done one other video, and I, gosh, I think I did it like five years ago, on how to make char cloth. Uh, it was out in my back screened-in porch area, and I made it on my old uh, propane uh, side burner on my propane gas grill. But um, I wanted to show you this today because this is an easy way to do it. A lot of times you'll see people making char cloth, and they have a huge bonfire going or one of their wood stoves burning and, you know, out in the wilderness, and sometimes that may not be something you can do, or you may live in an apartment or area that's kind of restricted to open fires, and you may want to make some char cloth for tinder for your own preparedness needs and not have a way to do it. So this is the way that I've done it in the past when I want to do it quickly. Um, you'll notice here I have some jean material. I love blue jean material for char cloth. Um, when you get a pair of blue jeans that are all ripped up and old and you don't want to wear them anymore, you just cut chunks out like I did. And uh, then we'll, we'll cut this down further when we want to make the, when we want to make the, uh, the cloth. So you're going to need some kind of cotton. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be blue jean material, but some kind of cotton. You're going to need a tin of some kind. This is just a generic tin that came with one of the many kits I've gotten over the years. Um, just a generic tin is fine. And a tin, you don't care what it looks like when we're done, because it's going to end up looking like this. Okay? You're going to need a punch or a drill or something. Because you're going to want to poke a hole in here, and we'll explain the reasoning for that later. And you're going to need some kind of burner. Now, you could probably even do this on a gas burner at home, on your gas stove, but I'd be a little careful with it. I want to, you want to make sure you've got good ventilation. So if you're going to do this in your house, and you're going to use an isobutane kind of stove like that here, um, you want to make sure you've got some good ventilation. You could do this on a porch, a patio. Um, you could even do this outside if you wanted. You can do this by a window, wherever. Just make sure that you have adequate fire suppression stuff around just in case the chances of this going out of control are next to none. And basically, you're going to put your stuff in there and light it up, and that's how it's going to work. So, let me get started with the first part of this, and that's going to be making this tin ready to use. Now, I'm just going to poke a hole with a punch here right through the middle. It doesn't need to be pretty. It doesn't need to be, you know, looking great. It just needs to work. So I'm going to punch that hole through there. I'm going to bring over my, uh, my little guide, and uh, we'll get a hole put there. Now what I decided to do today is even go more basic and just take a regular Phillips screwdriver. The hole is so you can tell when it's ready to be turned off and let cool off. The hole will, let me show you on this one. When you've got your char cloth in there and it's burning on the stove, there'll be fire coming out of that. There'll be a little, uh, you know, a little flame coming out. When that flame dies, it's ready. So you turn off your stove, you let it sit on the stove and cool off for however long that needs to be, and then you have char cloth inside. You'll open it up and you'll have, now I mean this is a bunch of char cloth that I've made over time. You don't want to do too much in one time because it will come out half charred, half still regular. Um, so this is a bunch, this is kind of my char cloth holder, but you'll put two or three or four sheets in there of, uh, of um, jean material, any kind of cotton material, and you'll be able to do that. So, first step is we need a hole. I'm going to grab my hammer. Don't mind me reaching across the camera here. And I'm just going to do this real, very basic and simple. I want to make sure I'm in that area there. There you go. That simple. Just poke a hole through there. Maybe you want to flatten that down so you don't cut yourself. But we're not even going to bother with that today. That's how we're going to do that. So let me get this stuff out of the way here. And we'll move on to the next segment. All right, so next up, you're going to start cutting your material. Um, I have a pair of scissors here, and I got a hunk of jean material like that. So generally, what you're going to want to do is just cut across and grab yourself a chunk like that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do with this is cut it in half. And wow, these scissors are dull. I didn't know that. <laughs> so you got something like that, and if you want to go even smaller, you can. You can go across like this, just like that. Real simple. We're going to cut a couple of these up. I would say no more than like two or three. You don't want to go too nuts because, like I said, it won't char thoroughly and you'll get a uh, less than effective item. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm just going to cut it in half. Eh, that's good. Yeah. 
And we're going to stick this inside here. Then we're going to move the stove over. And we're going to try and char up that cloth. And you see it doesn't need to be perfectly fit or whatever. Now before I do that, I want to show you how effective char cloth is. So I'm going to get a piece over here. And I'm just going to use a ferro rod today. You can use a flint and steel. You can do whatever you want. I actually had one out for this in my other flint and steel kit. But I think a ferro rod's a little bit faster and it'll show up better on camera. So we're going to do that. So give me a sec to show you. All right. Got a ferro rod and a striker. And as you can see already, see those little dots where it's red? There you go. Now you put that in a tinder bundle and you will have fire in no time. So let me go dump this out put it out and we'll start up our char cloth. Alright, so I got my stove up here and you can use any kind of butane stove, isobutane stove, propane, whatever. Again, adequate ventilation is key here. You want to make sure you're near a window, you have with windows open or whatever. You don't want carbon monoxide, you know, breathing into you. So um, what we're going to do here, and I do have a side window open and I also do have always a fire extinguisher on my table right here whenever I'm doing stuff with fire. So just be safe. You can do this. I mean, if you have an area to do this outside, like let's say you live in an apartment and you have a little terrace or something, go out there and do it. It's just safer. But if you don't, you can do it in, out, inside. So what we're going to do is, uh, this is already loaded with my, with my material. I'm just going to stick that on top. Turn this on. And there we go. And you'll start seeing it smoke and smolder, and that's okay. It even popped open there. That's fine. We're going to take and bring you back when there's a little bit of fire coming out of that hole. All right, you notice that the can warped a little bit, and that's normal. It'll do that. You see the fire coming out of the center there, and you'll see the fire coming out of where it kind of warped open. That will fix itself once we cool it down and everything. But right now I have it on a low simmer. It's just going to sit there and burn until it's all charred up. Now I'm going to bring you back once that flame goes out, and then I'm going to wait the proper amount of time because of course you don't want to grab this right off the fire when you're done and we're gonna see what comes out of our char cloth just wanted to bring you back to show you if this is perfectly normal it will come out of the sides sometime too but the center is what you want to watch on this and you can see how it's smoldering you can see why I'd say if you can do this outside I do have my ventilation out here open so I'm not worried about it and I also have um, you know again this fire extinguisher very close by but uh, once, the, uh, once you stop seeing a lot of smoke and you're just seeing flame, you're doing pretty good. That's going to be ready fairly soon. So remember, you're waiting for that flame, any kind of flame, to go out. Then you're going to turn off your uh, stove and let it sit and grab out what you get. So I kind of want to show you the progressions. You notice how we're down to just that one little flame in the middle there? And eventually that flame will go out. And that's when you know it's ready. Now, there's a whole lot of controversy, as with anything in the outdoors, on how to do this. You can do this without that on top. You can just let it char in there. You can throw this into a fire. You know, if you got happen to have a campfire going somewhere where you're camping, you can just toss it in a fire. It looks like it's almost ready to go out, too. Um, there's a whole lot of controversy. It's just, just the way I do it. It's the way I was taught. Um, you can do it any way you want. So as we see, that flame in the middle is about to go out. That means everything inside is good and charred. There's no more burning going on. And you kind of have like charcoal made out of cloth, you know. So we're going to let it go all the way out like it did just there. Turn off the stove. And we're just going to sit and let that cool off. And I'll bring you back when it's cooled off. All right, so it's been cooling for a while. And as you can tell, that little warped area there went down. Now, because I'm an impatient little bugger and I want to show you this stuff, <laughs> I put on some gloves because it's still a little warm. And we're going to take it off there. It doesn't feel too bad, but it's still a little warm. And there you go. There's your char cloth. So in order to make this a fully complete video, of course you know I'm going to have to test it out. <laughs> so let me grab one piece out of here. There we go. And this stuff will rip very easily. It'll tear very easily. Don't worry about that. That's perfectly normal. Actually, that is cool to the touch. Wow. That was quick. And you see how when it warped up like that, it went right back down once it cooled off. And there we go. Right on the side, see? And with a ferro rod, it's kind of neat because you get the little bit of ferro rod that snaps off there and makes those sparks. That's how easy it is. That's how easy it is to do it at home. And 
then it's really, really simple. It's an awesome tinder. As you can tell, if I had a bundle of, you know, dried leaves or something, I would just stick this in the middle, blow on it, and I'd have a fire in no time. So that is how you make yourself some very handy, very awesome tinder um, with some char cloth. Really simple to do. Again, any cotton material can be used. You don't have to do anything fancy with it. You don't have to uh, stick a ton of... Uh, rare fibers in there. I just like using jean material because if I have a pair of jeans you can get a lot of char cloth out of that. And that is a pair of jeans that I actually got battery acid on when I was filling up my batteries and they had tiny little holes all over them so I ended up buying a new pair of jeans and getting rid of that. And you see with this there's no rush. That's the nice part about this. You don't have to rush like okay I got a little flame I gotta quickly do stuff. It's ready to go right there. You can take your time with it. You see that line, I don't know if you can see that line of flame where it's slowly working its way over. There you go. So you see how effective that is as a tinder. That's a really awesome tinder and it's awesome if you're doing flint and steel as well. If you're sitting there with a flint and steel and you're trying to get a spark, that will take a spark in no time flat. So that's today's tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I like doing this stuff for people that maybe, you know, don't have uh, three acres of backyard to go out in, in the wild and do it. You can do this right in your house. You can do this right on your kitchen counter um, if you want to. You just remember, be safe, have ventilation, make sure that everything is aired out nicely, and you will be able to make yourself some nice uh, char cloth tinder and uh, have a fire going real easily. I always carry a piece of this rolled up inside um, one of my little containers that I carry with me in my EDC bag. So it's always nice to have that ready to go. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe if you liked the content. You can check out all my old content on my videos page. And lastly, do not forget to check out our link down below for foodforpatriots.com. Okay? I have a link there, 70 bucks off right now on the four-day kit. It's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. Real simple. I'll leave the link down below. You can check out our Amazon affiliate store as well if you're interested. I try to put everything that I review in there. Matter of fact, I believe that stove is in there if you're interested in it. Um, I try to put everything that I review in the store so you can check out specs and stuff on things that I might have forgotten to tell you about. And don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link as well. Below there is our Thrive Life link. You, everything is back in stock, pretty much. So if you're interested in getting stocked up now before another rush, now's the time to do it. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.